We've been getting a lot of questions about this topic. Also, I noticed on Instagram, my feed is filled with people talking about this topic to the point where I'm like, this isn't new, but is it just new to me? Is it in the zeitgeist? Is that the word you use to talk about like the the ether of the fabric of our society? Is there something to this now where there is a new found enthusiasm? And here it is, protein. Like, what's the deal? I know that sounds so silly, but it's like, all these people writing about it. And then on Instagram, it's like constantly like, how are you going to get your protein? Do you need it? This is what you need for weight loss. Menopause women, protein, protein, protein. What's the deal? (laughs) You know what Mm. I'm saying? I mean, I've been so protein focused for- Well, forever. I've been hyper focused on protein for like six years now. So if there is a sudden influx of that, I maybe am not noticing it. Because, yeah. or, you know, I wish I was noticing it to go like, yeah, people are catching on. This is a good thing. But there, there's a couple of things to take into consideration with protein. Like, I think one of the things that jumps to my mind is, especially with how many people are going to be on these GLP ones, that basically makes it easy to do a crash diet. You know what I mean? Like, No, what do you mean? Like, I mean, you're just not hungry. So you're just not eating a lot. And if you're losing a couple pounds a week, that's what you would lose on a super low calorie diet. I mean, you're basically on a super low calorie diet because you're not hungry. Mm. And you'll hear um, he's such a brilliant guy and he has a clinic in Texas and he's put people on these and he says that he always sees 40% lean tissue loss on GLP ones. Do you know who I'm talking about? Peter Atia. Oh, David Atia. Yeah, yeah, Peter Atia. Peter. Peter. Peter Atia. He's been a guest on the show. He's a brilliant guy. He's written really cool books. Now that's anecdotal, but I think he has a lot of patience and I'm sure he's put a bunch of people on it. And that's the result he sees in his practice is that 40% of the weight that's lost is lean tissue. That's muscle. I had that experience on keto, which you would think like if you're eating a lot of meat, you're getting a lot of protein. But really, I was when I would be losing weight on keto, I was losing a couple or a few pounds a week, and I was losing 40% lean tissue. Really putting an effort to get your protein up and get like, you know, there's some magical figure of like 1.8 grams per kilogram or something like that, or maybe it's 0.8 grams per kilogram. I now do one gram per pound of body weight. That's my goal every day. But you could do, you know, somebody who's 500 pounds, they don't need to eat 500 grams of protein. They could eat one gram per goal, per pound of goal weight. You know, if they want to get to 200 pounds, eat 200 grams of protein a day. It's very hard for your body to turn protein into fat. Your body doesn't do that very easily. If, I mean, I'm not even sure that it can. I'm sure there's some circumstance where it could, but like your body, it's hard for your body to use protein as fuel. And so your body can turn some of it into glycogen, but mostly what protein is doing is going to repair muscles. It's not ideal fuel source for your body. So your body can't store it or doesn't, won't easily store it as fuel. So it's really hard to gain weight by eating an abundance of protein. If you eat an abundance of protein and an abundance of fats and carbohydrates, yes, you'll gain weight. Um, But if you keep your fats and carbohydrates low, eat an abundance of protein and get into a caloric deficit, that is the best eating recipe to retain lean tissue. Now Mm -hmm. you also have to stimulate your muscles a little bit to tell them they're of use and needed. So a little resistance training, but I think that could be why it's becoming more and more prevalent because one of the, you know, one of the effects of a crash diet is that you're losing a lot of lean tissue. I experienced this on every crash diet. I I experienced this on keto when I was doing like my low calorie keto, when keto stopped producing weight loss for me. And I was just like, kind of starving myself and doing keto. So I was eating no carbohydrates and 
under eating to get into a calorie deficit, I was losing 40% lean tissue. Um, so if you just go into something where you're taking a shot, that's making it easy to under eat by enough of a degree that you're going to lose rapidly lose weight, right? Not a pound a week for, Mm -hmm. you know, a hundred weeks or however long it would take you to lose a hundred pounds, but a few pounds a week and you don't increase your protein and you don't do resistance training. A lot of it is going to come from lean tissue. Mm -hmm. Not the majority, but like 40%. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Like maybe this topic, and again, maybe I'm crazy, but we have gotten a lot of questions about it. And I'm just going off of like the things I see on social media, but it just feels like, yeah, this has become to your point of like keto and all these crash diets. I did every crash diet in the world my whole life. Right. And I never remember to focus on protein, making sure you got enough or anything like that. Even when I, I don't know, back in the day, worked out with different trainers or this or that, or like tried things. I don't know. I just feel like it was not, but then again, I suppose I did have someone in the bodybuilding health world for some years. And and I would say, yeah, now that I think about it, that was very focused on, you know, his protein drinks and all that kind of stuff. So I guess in that community, maybe it's, is it becoming more mainstream now, but anyway, it doesn't matter, but I guess how does it aid in weight loss if you're, I don't know, how does it aid in weight loss? And also what are, what do you do to get in all those grams of protein? Let's say you're, you know, you need to have 200 grams of protein. It's like, is it just drinks? Is it like, how do you do it? <laughs> There's a couple cool things about protein. The thermal effect, which just is dealing with your body's, um, the amount of work your body has to do to digest and put into use protein is much higher than carbohydrates and fats. Fat is actually the easiest. You put fat in your mouth and it's going to go very easily be stored as fat, especially if you are in a caloric surplus or just maintaining. Like your body, there's a few functions that, uh, hormonal functions that your body needs fat to deal with. And then other than that, your body can just take fat and store it as fat very easily. Carbohydrates, slightly more complicated. Your body takes them in, turns them into glucose, attaches, you know, four parts of water to each part of glucose. It becomes glycogen and is stored in your muscles. So it's slightly more complicated and it's harder for your body. So your body works more to digest it and to put it into action. And all of this has an energy requirement, right? So your body actually has to like work to do, to, to, to use this fuel protein. It's the hardest. Your body has to like take it, digest it, put it to break down into amino acids and put it to work repairing muscle tissue. So there's more bang for your buck in the idea of weight loss with consuming protein. It's filling. It tends to be satiating, like you eat it and you're not immediately hungry. You know, like this could be entirely anecdotal, but I know like if I eat um, a bowl of ice cream, I'm not super satisfied. Like I could keep eating ice cream. Mm-hmm. I can keep eating chips. I can keep, I can eat pasta until I'm ready to burst very difficult for me to eat lean protein to, you know, like non-fat Greek yogurt, egg whites, chicken breasts. If you zhuzh them up with teriyaki sauce or ranch dressing, or you batter them and deep fry them, they become easier for me to overeat, but just protein minus fat and carbohydrates. I have found there's a limit to what my body wants to take in, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a benefit with dieting. If you're trying to get into a caloric deficit by whatever model, right? You're a vegan, you're a, you're going to do carnivore or keto or one of these things or paleo, or you're cutting out processed food, increasing your protein. And the only situation which would kind of limit this is if you've had like a kidney surgery, if you've, if you're missing a kidney, if you have kidney disease, protein can be a problem. But other than that, there really is no evidence to say that you can eat too much protein. You really can't eat too much protein. Your body will put it to use or you'll, you know, 
it, it will put it to use somehow, whether it's okay. repairing tissues or ultimately converting it to glycogen, which will then be stored in your muscles or used immediately as fuel. So it's beneficial that way. 